Hi there. Today I'm just going to be showing you a few things about a program called Zineworks. Uh, it's a program that is, is good for text and multimedia, and it's uh, mainly for, for churches, or it's designed for churches. Um, so this is the main screen. Um, over this side is your song database, um, and it gives you the ability to either search by title or by keywords. So title is just looking for the written title, uh, and keywords is searching through the whole file for any words that match. Um, so it makes it very easy to to start a playlist of some the songs that you're going to sing. Um, so let's just add some songs. And what you can then do is save this playlist. Um, so you've got the songs together that you're going to sing in that service. Uh, and I'll just save the playlist. So the 10, 10 a.m. service out on the 10th of July 2010. And that just means that if I'm coming back at a later stage, I can uh, reopen up this playlist. Um, so let me just change this. This isn't something normal. So now that you've got the songs that you're going to use for your service, you have the ability to just double-click on that again, and it brings up the different parts in that song. Uh, and these three buttons up the top here, um, you've got Fade to Black, Fade to background only, which we'll look at in a second, and then fade background and text. Um, at the moment, I've just got this window that you see here is what you'd normally see on your primary monitor, on your laptop or your computer, and up the background here where you can see those words big is where you'd normally, that would normally go on your second screen, which would go to your projector. Uh, Zineworks configures that all for you, uh, as long as you have a a dual desktop computer, uh, but just for the purpose of showing you, I've just got it running on the same screen. So what's at the back there would normally be on the projection screen. So, uh, yeah, so start of the service, um, it's as simple as fading it out for the first section and then just navigating through the song. Uh, so the advantage of this, obviously, is that if they go back and repeat a chorus where they weren't originally going to, it's very easy to jump through the sections. Uh, now I'm just double clicking on the section and it brings it up. Uh, some people like to use the mouse up and down, uh, sorry, the keyboard up and down keys and then hit enter to select. That also works so you can do either of those methods. Um, and then at the end of the song you just fade back down and select the, the next song ready to go and fade up for the next song. Um, you can jump straight to the next song um, but it's just a bit neater, and if you, especially if you've got a break between the songs anyway, you fade down at the, the end of that song, bring up the next one, and when they're ready to sing, fade it up again. Um, another thing, I'll quickly show you the, uh, the database where the songs are stored. So this, all these songs, you can add, edit, and delete them. Uh, so to add a new song, you simply hit this one here, You've got the main title, um, so the main title of the song. A lot of people use the alternate title as the first line um, of the song, so just giving you a different thing to search by. Um, and then you've got the lyrics, which some people like to just copy and paste them from the internet or just typing the song. So... And you put a double space for where it's a different uh, section, so between verses and choruses. And a double space will mean that it comes up as a different different section down on this side when you're putting it to the screen. Uh, the written and copyright details. So written by, copyright, date, and who it's copyright to. Uh, and don't worry about default style. Uh, and hit OK. And that song is now it uh, sorry that song is now added to this database of songs, um, so you can now add that to your playlist like that. That copyright information that you typed it's a bit hard to see here, but it displays uh, and even down the bottom of the screen there you can barely see it because I've got the thing wrong. Um, but it displays the copyright details as well as your CCLI. Uh, copyright license number down the bottom of the screen there. So that's all covered. Um, PowerPoint during the service. 
is again all incorporated in this one Zineworks window. So what you can do is using this button here, you can open up any PowerPoints that you're going to use during your service. So that's one, and so I've got one for the, the message or the sermon and one for the notices. And what you can actually do is insert them in your playlist as well. So I'll insert both of them. So say you can use these arrows here to position where you want them in the playlist. So say you're going to have one song, then the notices, another song, the message, and then two more songs. We'll do that one for now. And then another song. And again, you can just, just save that so that if you close Zineworks, you can actually just reopen reopen that playlist. So then as you're going through your, your service, uh, you come up to the notices and just double-click on that, and it will bring up the first the first slide of that PowerPoint. Uh, and you've got your, your PowerPoint controls here, next slide, previous, pause, and stop. Um, or when there's more, more than one slide in a presentation, you can actually just scroll down and jump and just double-click on the next uh, on the next slide, um, images is for backgrounds of the text. Um, so you've got different categories, and what they relate to. I'll just show you quickly. Um, the folder, there's a shortcut to it in your program files Zineworks folder, but you can also put a shortcut in your, uh, say, your My Documents or your My Pictures folder. Um, but it's it's stored in the application data folder for Zineworks. And what you can do is you just create a new folder and start putting uh, photos in there and you can use them within Zineworks. So, for instance, for your youth group service, you might have some logos and stuff that you want as the background of the text. So at the moment, there's only one image in there under flowers and you'll see in Zineworks here, when I pick the flowers category, it'll show all the images in that category and you can actually assign, uh, when you've got a song selected, you can assign, maybe, what's happening? There you go. So you can assign that image to that song. I'll just put it on outline and just change the setting quickly. All this is set as a default. Um, so you set it once, save it, and it doesn't need to be done again. So then, uh, and again, once you save that playlist, that picture is associated only with the songs you've selected it for. So you can assign different pictures to different songs and it will actually remember that and you won't need to do that during the service. So then when you've... That's where this other button up here comes into play. If I hit that one, it fades up the background. Um, so you can fade that right at the start of the song and then fade up the text separately uh, if you want to. Or you can just go straight from there straight back to fade them all out and that fades quite slow but again you can set those settings and once they're set they stay the same um, sorry the only other thing I didn't cover was editing songs just jumping back so if you need to edit a song you just find it in the database here click edit and again you've just got whoops you just got those same details um, so that's a good example uh, TIS is a hymn book number so um yeah don't worry about that but you can yeah you've again here they've used alternate title as the first line of the song so just an easy way to be able to find it written by copyright details so they all display down here you can't really see it there but um you can see it on uh, when you bring it to the screen um so that's the basics uh, and I might do another video with some more advanced details of, of changing some of the settings. Um, but yeah, that's that's the basics. So thanks for watching.